fire, water, oil and steam. All the basic ingredients that combine to create that form of mechanical transportation which has for over 150 years evolved more romanticism with its noises and smells to make nostalgia synonymous with steam railways. To perpetuate that exciting atmosphere of live steam has been the task of many railway preservation societies. Even more so do the skills of the engineer extend this universal appeal into mechanical scaled working models. Models they may be, but professionally run, they can also provide a service. Include all the magical qualities of steam, and you have the world's smallest public railway. Romney Hythe and Dimchurch Railway was the brainchild of Captain Jack Howey, who with fellow racing driver Count Louis Zborowski decided to build a scale model railway that would operate profitably while at the same time providing a service to the local people. Work on the railway began in 1926 and it was open to traffic in July 1927 with the main headquarters of the railway at New Romney. The chief source of revenue has always been from holiday makers and summer visitors, giving the station a gentlemanly air of bustle that has disappeared from the nationalised railways carrying the daily commuter rat race. Count Sporowski was killed while driving in the Italian Grand Prix and never saw the completion of his dream, so it was left to Captain Howey to carry on the project and to commission engineer Henry Greenley, already an eminent designer of miniature railways, to design the one-third scale express locomotives. Henry Greenlee's versatility as a planner led to the layout of the Romney Hythe and Dimchurch Railway as it is today. The route of the railway across the Romney Marsh follows and crosses the Royal Military Canal, built during the Napoleonic Wars as part of the defences against the threatened French invasion along the Kent coast. From New Romney, the line runs north through Dimchurch to the Hythe Terminal. The loop line to Dungeness was added in 1928. New Romney station rapidly grew as the area encompassed a number of developing holiday camps, which provided the summer traffic essential to the line as envisaged by Captain Howey, even down to carrying their pets, prams and bicycles. The RH and DR is not a toy. The operating problems are those of a full-size concern. The engine man, acting as farmer as well, is responsible for the safety of up to 200 passengers, plus all the routine jobs of refueling, minor repairs and adjustments, and maintaining his engine fastidiously. You'd have to go a long way to find any locomotive kept cleaner and with more pride than those of the RH and DR. All the correct operational signals and rules of a full-scale working railway have to be correctly followed. Another job is to push his engine around the turntable. The RH and DR is unusual among British minor railways in that its stable of steam locomotives have always been of one basic design, the design of Henry Greenley. The nine locos comprise seven Pacific 462 tender machines and two Mountain 482 class. The Pacific design stems from the admiration Greenley and Howey felt for Sir Nigel Gresley's impressive Great Northern used by the LNER. It was only natural that a similar outline and general design should be adopted for these 15-inch gauge engines.
engine sheds, sidings and through lines all make for a complex web of track at New Romney Station. However, to maintain regular trains with all their necessary manoeuvres calls for a signal system able to control all movements with adequate simplicity. The signals are properly interlocked with the points for safety. The whole layout of the line shows Captain Howe's determination to run a real mainline railway. originally linked two southern railway termini and approval had to be obtained not only from them but also from local councils and residents before building commenced. Legal authority granted, the railway also had to get permission from the Ministry of Transport to carry passengers. Their inspectors were favourably impressed, declaring that as the company had provided all mainline installations, it had their blessing to operate as such. The most important part of the line is the journey to Hythe. The station retains much of Greenlee's original design and it makes an imposing finish to the journey at the northern terminus. Many of the passengers start their journey here at Hythe as it's close to the main London Dover Road. It's easy to see the appeal that steam has for a very varied selection of prospective passengers. The Romney Marsh site was selected as it's basically a very level area and no major engineering work was needed. The flat run ideally suits the large wheel locomotives designed for the 15 inch gauge track. The coaches are comparable in size with the locomotives and sit to a side in considerable comfort. Many of the local holiday camps charter a train and visitors can enjoy a non-stop run along the whole line. <laughs> Travelling to school by train is a daily treat for some local children. Kent County Council has replaced their normal school bus service with a steam-powered journey across the marsh from Dimchurch to their primary school at New Romney. Most of the level crossings are unmanned, but at Dimchurch, the station master often controls the crossing at peak time. In line with modern practice, the busiest crossings are now controlled by lights. Trains travel at top speeds of 25 miles an hour, equivalent for their scale to 75 miles an hour.
The railway runs daily from Easter to the end of September, with the most intensive service during the school summer holidays. At the busiest time, there is a half-hourly service from Hythe to New Romney. A reduced service, at weekends only, is operated for the rest of the year. During the winter months, the railway staff's chief activity is maintenance. So almost everybody employed needs to have at least two skills, one for the running season and one for the winter. The railway's own workshop turns out two or three new coaches every year. The railway employs some 25 people all year round, including drivers, fitters, plate layers and coach builders. Painting is another constant task. The normal wear and tear is exaggerated by the proximity of the sea and its salty atmosphere. In the main locomotive shed, where the engines are steamed, light repairs can be carried out. Probably the greatest tribute to their designer and their builders, Davy Paxman of Colchester, is that the locomotives have been kept in a fine, active condition for over 50 years of arduous service. The erecting shop with a travelling crane that's able to lift an engine off its wheels or a boiler off its frame. Just how dedicated the staff are can be seen in the way that they turn their hands to some of the very difficult jobs often making vital parts that are unobtainable. After the railway had been running for a year, it was decided to build the two North American-styled engines. Henry Greenley designed them with a resemblance to the Canadian Pacific Railway, with a slight flavour of the Pennsylvania Railroad. They have bigger cabs to protect the drivers against the cold winter weather. Both are 462s, with the same boilers, cylinders and driving wheels as the British Pacifics. Travelling at speed across the marshes, they really give the impression of the iron horses that steamed across the American prairies. Drivers on the single line to Dungeness have to be in possession of a train staff before entering the section, making certain that two trains do not meet head on. After passing under the main road at New Romney, the double track reduces to single, and from then on the train is never more than a hundred yards from the sea. Dungeness is the biggest area of shingle in Europe, if not the world. When the line opened, the only view was of sea and pebble. But now many houses have been built on the shingle. Some houses have lawns and gardens. They arrive by the lorry load. But for most families along here, their lawn mowing and gardening problems have all been solved. In general, Dungeness is either very bracing or very bleak. Half a mile before Dungeness station, the line divides to form a great circle so that trains do not have to reverse. the end of the line, 14 miles from Hythe, with a normal journey taking about 70 minutes. The nuclear power station at Dungeness stands as a modern symbol of energy. Electricity, the clean power that probably has played the most decisive part in vanquishing steam railways. It was another source of power, oil, that gave the RH and DR its finest hour. During the war, the railway was requisitioned by the army. 
and carried the sections of the Pluto pipeline that was laid from Dungeness across the channel to carry fuel after the D-Day landings in Normandy. Then the 6th Battalion of the Somerset Light Infantry wanted some mobile firepower, so they fitted armour plating, Lewis guns and an anti-tank rifle. Some of this sting was lost, however, when the guns had to be removed to pass under low bridges. The train was never seriously used in action, but its crew always claimed that they shot down at least one enemy aircraft. In 1945, when the army left, the line was not in good condition. In fact, German prisoners of war helped to rebuild much of the track that had suffered through neglect. To celebrate the railway's 50th anniversary, the souvenir shop at New Romney had special first day letter covers for sale. Commemorating 50 golden years of steam, they bore a special franc to show that they had been carried by the bug. The bug was used during the construction of the railway, an 040 tender engine that was sold once the work was finished due to her slow speed. She finally ended up on a scrap heap in Belfast. In 1972, her battered remains were found under tons of old iron and she was purchased by Mr McAlpine, has been rebuilt and is now at least as good as new. The bug's welcome return to the railway as she conveys the special covers commemorating the line's golden jubilee. At Hythe, the special covers are handed over to the Royal Mail, where they're sent off to stamp collectors and railway enthusiasts the world over. The railway was honoured by a royal visit on the 30th of March 1957. Her Majesty the Queen, accompanied by the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Charles and Princess Anne, visited the line. The royal children took turns to ride on the footplate of Hurricane and travelled in a special coach. In 1947, the railway celebrated its 21st anniversary and the post-war reopening, a ceremony that was widely publicised at the time. When the Romney, Hythe and Dimchurch Railway, the smallest public railway in the world, recently celebrated its 21st birthday, Messrs Laurel and Hardy were invited to the party. One of their jobs was to reopen the section from Romney to Dungeness. <laughs> <laughs> they also slipped gently aboard one of the trains and enjoyed a trip on this very comfortable line. <laughs> At New Romney Station they met the mayor and shook hands all round. Like all small boys, the two comedians were greatly intrigued by the outsized toy engine, especially Hardy. The Jubilee Limited, another special train to mark the railway's 50th anniversary. The railway directors invited the Mayor of Hythe and other local officials to travel from Hythe to New Romney via the Dungeness Loop. Heading the train is engine number one, Green Goddess. The Mayor of Hythe cuts the tape and all is set for the non-stop run.
Two other passengers on this commemorative journey travelled on the very first passenger run 50 years ago. Mrs Hay was five years old and her brother Ken Mills was seven. Their grandfather supplied the timber used in building the railway. The driver of the Jubilee Limited is George Barlow, the railway's operating manager and regular driver of Green Goddess. George is the longest serving member of the staff, having joined the RH&DR in 1946. He must deserve a place in the record books, having driven the same locomotive for 30 years. Captain Howey died in 1963 and must be envied for having achieved his ambition. To have come from 100 miles an hour on the motor racing circuits to 25 miles an hour on Romney Marsh had made him a happy man. In 1968, the railway was bought by a group of local businessmen, but some expensive problems were looming. Captain Howey had originally briefed Henry Greenlee to build the railway to last 40 years, to last his lifetime, as he couldn't see anybody else keeping the line running. Greenlee had judged matters only too well. The new owners soon realised that the amount of money needed to restore things was too much for them to find. So in 1972, the railway was resold and is now a public company with over 400 shareholders, dedicated to the task of restoration and the continuation of keeping steam alive with all its glories remembered. Today's children will never know the magic of long-distance, high-speed, mainline steam trains. The barely held in power of a locomotive waiting to depart, the eager roaring on the run, the quiet entry to the terminus. The achievement, not just of machine, but also of the skill and strength of the men on the footplate. The response of the many visitors, especially the young, gives faith and proof that the Romney, Hythe and Dimchurch Railway is succeeding in keeping alive some flavour of those proud days of steam.